Hello and welcome to the first video in a series on how to fly the Flight Factor 757 for X-Plane 10 and 11. This video is aimed at people who are new to X-Plane and will go over some of the basics first. If you hear weird sounds in the background, don't worry, that's just my 3D printer. After you've loaded up the plane, you'll probably be looking at something like this. By pressing Shift 4 and Shift 9 on your keyboard, you can swap between an outside view and an inside view. You can rotate a camera by holding the right mouse button and you can zoom in and out using the mouse wheel. You should take a minute and admire the really really nice model of the 757. I mean after all you've paid a lot of money for it, right? The next thing you want to do is go into your virtual cockpit by pressing shift 9 and move the view to where it feels comfortable for you. You can do this again by rotating the camera using the right mouse button and you can move the view forwards with dot, backwards with comma, left and right with the arrow keys on your keyboard, up and down with the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard. So I've set it to something like this. You can also, under render settings, you can also adjust your field of view to where you, what well, feels comfortable for you. Once you've found a position that you think is comfortable, you hold control on your keyboard and you press 4 on your number pad. What this does is it saves the current view to 4 on your number pad. If you now press shift 4 to go to the outside view and you press 4 on the number pad you'll see it jump straight back to where you left off. Similarly if we rotate the camera to look at something if we press 4 it'll pan it back to where it was. So what we do next is we're going to move the view so we have a good vision of the overhead panel. We press 4 on the number pad, so we are at our starting position, and we move the camera right with the right arrow, and then we pan it up, so we're slight, somewhat in the center line, something like that. We move it up with the right mouse arrow, now you see you're way too close, right? So we have to back out with the comma, then we move up a little bit with the up, keyboard, uh, the up key on your keyboard, maybe a little bit more up and pan it a little bit down you know you keep doing this until you get a view that you think is suits you you don't need the fuse back here you just need the overhead panel basically once you're happy with what you got again you hold control and then you can press you know any number on your number pad so let's say eight right so I set this as my overhead panel so now if I go four I have to forward view and eight, oh, I set it to five, uh, I have the overhead panel, right? Very easy to move between those, these two views. Similarly, we can go outside, you know, look at something, four, we're in the cockpit, and eight or five, whatever's here to do, you get the overhead panel, very nice. Feel free to set up additional views. So as an example, two, I have an overhead of the radio, and on nine, I have a shot over the wing from the passenger cabin, which is also modeled on this plane. This is especially nice when you're flying through turbulence and you can, see re you can really see the wings flex. It looks phenomenal. Once you've set up the views you like, press 4 to go back into your virtual cockpit. Now we're going to move the view slightly down and we see the little iPad, which is of course not an iPad. Uh, click on it and then we get the general tab. Now in the general tab, what you want to do is you want to check that you have real limits on and real time off. Real limits mean that if you abuse the aircraft by overspeeding or uh, pulling too many G's it will break and you know for me that's necessary for immersion. I like to keep real time off because I don't want to wait 30 minutes for my passengers to board. However if you're going for ultra realism of course uh, you know real, you're gonna re keep real time on right. Uh, similarly there are other options uh, you know you can there's a little help text at the bottom just go through them. Now we go to the ground screen. What we need here is we need the passenger bus, we need the stairs, as well as the fuel truck and the chocks. If you're parked at the gate, you can skip the bus and the stairs and go straight for the gate config. Next, we choose the number of passengers, so let's say 128, and the cargo weight, let's say 5,000 pounds, and the fuel weight. Now, I've previously calculated that for this flight to Palermo, we will need 35,000 pounds of fuel. Uh, a good web page to calculate rough um, fuel requirements is fuelplanner.com. 
However, before we can load the plane, we have to open at least one door. So we're going to click on airplane and we click, click the left front door as well as the forward cargo door. Then we can go back to ground and click load and unload. If you see the little text here saying loading the plane, please wait. As I said, if you have the uh, realistic time turn off, this will only take a few seconds. At this point you can pause the video and go through the other screens if you like. Uh, I will quickly show you my avionics settings that you can copy if you want. Uh, again, you can play with this. I like, as an example, I like to have the airspeed tape on. Uh, I don't like the, uh, the Q Flight Director. But you know, try the different options. Some are unavailable on this plane and some you cannot change once you have powered up the plane. So at this point it's quite important that you turn on the PIP FMC. If you can't do this now, reload the plane real quick and do it here. The PIP FMC is more advanced than the FMC that was delivered with the first 757s and it does additional things such as VSP calculations that the original one did not do. You would have to look it up in tables. Close the iPad menu by pressing the little X key and press your key for the overhead panel that you set up earlier. Flip open the battery cover and turn on the battery switch. Close the cover. If you forget to close the cover, you'll get an error message later. But no big deal, you can do it at any time. Turn on the standby power to auto and go down to the APU settings and move it to start. It'll take a little bit of time before the APU is powered up. You know it is powered up when you get the run message here. Don't worry about the fault message, this will go away. Next we're going to turn on the bus ties left and right as well as the utility bus for left and right. Whatever you do, do not touch the generator drive disconnection switches or your boss will be mad with you. If you disconnect the generator from an engine, it can only be reconnected in maintenance on the ground so don't do it unless you have to disconnect the generator. Now we're going to go up here and switch the three IRS modules to NAV. A line to the left, I'll show you real quick, is generally not used unless you have to realign the IRS for some reason. Alignment, IRS alignment with realistic time takes something like 10 minutes or so and important to remember is you cannot move the plane while you do it. We can turn on the yaw dampers at the same time and we can turn on the electric hydraulic pumps as well as the electric center, center hydraulic pumps. We need the hydraulic pumps so that we can set the trim setting later. Now we're going to go to the middle, we're going to turn on the emergency lights, we can turn on the engine limiters, we skip through here, we can turn on the fuel pumps left and right since we have 3,000 pounds in the center tank, we're also going to turn on the center pressure. If you don't turn on the center pumps, you'll see you get an error message here saying fuel config. Similarly, if you try to turn on these pumps without having fuel in here, you'll get the same error message. We can also turn on the cross feeds if you like. Now we keep moving down here. We're going to skip through the anti-ice, turn it on if you need it of course. We're going to turn on our position lights. We're going to turn on the logo light. We're not going to turn on any landing lights, no scare or runway turn off lights. We'll do that when we start taxi. We go up here, we're going to turn on the window heat. We're going to turn on the passenger signs. We're going to turn on the cabin altitude control by moving it to auto 1. And we move the landing altitude to our destinations. In this case, Palermo is it's basically sea level. Something like that. Uh, we don't need equipment cooling right now. Now we move over here and we come to the pressurization panel. Move the three switches to auto, which is the flight deck, the forward cabin, and the after cabin. Turn on the recirculation fans as well as the trim air. Now these switches actually connect or disconnect the bleed system from the pressurization system. You don't have to turn these on. You need these off to turn on the engine. However, if you leave them off while you're doing all your FMC programming, your passengers will either freeze or roast to death, uh, which, you know, either way is not terribly good for business. So we're going to turn these on. 
We're going to turn on the APU bleed air as well as the isolation valve. Now at this point, you might be wondering, you know, why are these why are these dials not moving? If we go back over here, we can see the APU is running now, and we can power the actual system. Now you see we get bleed air pressure. You can hear the sound coming up, and you can see the temperatures up here rising fairly quickly. This concludes what we have to do on the overhead panel right now. So we can go back to our main seat by pressing four, and your plane should be pretty much powered up. At this point, we can program the FMC. To learn how to do that, the easy, the quick way, you can watch my second video that's on the channel already. I hope you guys have enjoyed this very brief tour of the Flight Factor 757. It is a great plane, and after a short learning curve, you'll find that it is really great to fly. It is probably the most overpowered passenger jet you can fly. The climb rates of 4,000 feet per minute are completely possible. It flies like a rocket. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time, and happy flying.